My name is Don Matchell. In this video, I will be discussing how to style and insert a table of contents into a document. A table of contents normally appears near the first of a document. A table of contents lists various areas of the document serving as an outline of what the document contains. A table of contents traditionally tells readers what page in the document to go to for information listed. A table of contents now often provides hyperlinks to the areas listed. I've prepared a very simple document to illustrate how you can easily add a table of contents to a document if you use LibreOffice Writer's basic heading styles. I'll move the cursor to the beginning of the first line after the title and hit enter. I move the cursor up a line. I'll go to insert, table of contents and index, table of contents, index or bibliography. A dialog appears. I go to the type tab. In the type and title section, I select table of contents in the type area. A generic table of contents appears in the title area. You can change this if you want. Notice the check mark beside Protect Against Manual Changes. I suggest you always leave this checked so you don't run into problems later. If you uncheck this and make manual changes, the manual changes will be lost if you update the table of contents. I click OK. A table of contents appears in the document. Show you why I said leave protected against manual changes selected. I'll place the cursor beside the capital T in chapter 2. Watch what happens if I hit the delete key. A message appears saying write protected content cannot be changed. You always want to make changes outside of this area and then update the contents of the table of contents. The first thing you may notice is that the table of contents has a gray background. This indicates that the table of contents is a field and can be updated if changes are made to the document. Notice that chapter 1 begins on page 1. I'll scroll to just below the table of contents. Put the cursor before the first line of text after the table of contents and go to insert page break. I'll go back to the table of contents. Notice the table of contents still says chapter 1 starts on page 1. In LibreOffice Writer, the table of contents does not update automatically. However, I can right click within the table of contents and select Update Index. Notice how the page numbers have changed. The gray background will not print as can be seen if you go to Print Preview. I'll close Print Preview. Also, the gray background will not appear if you export the document to PDF. If the gray background bothers you, however, you can turn it off by going to Tools, Options, LibreOffice, Application Colors. Scroll down to the Text Documents section. Deselect Index and Table Shadings. Watch what happens if I click Apply. I'll select Index and Table Shadings again. You will soon become accustomed to the gray background and it will be a constant reminder that this is a special area of the document you are working on. You can also go to Print Preview to see what the document will look like without the gray background. Before leaving this dialog, I'll go to the LibreOffice Writer section and select Formatting Aids. In the Protected Areas section, make sure Enable Cursor is checked. If not, you will not be able to right click in the table of contents area to update it. I'll close this dialog. 
By default, LibreOffice Writer uses the various heading paragraph styles for the different levels in the table of contents. These levels are also automatically set up as hyperlinks in the table of contents. Notice the tooltip if I move the mouse over Chapter 2. If I hold down Control, the mouse cursor turns into a hand. If I then click the mouse button, I am taken to the area of the document. If the document is exported as a PDF, the links in the table of contents will act as normal links. You don't need to hold control. I'll go to File, Export As, Export Directly as PDF. I'll save the document. Then I'll open this PDF document. Notice that the cursor turns to a hand when I hover over Chapter 2, indicating that it is a clickable link. I'll click on it. I'm taken to that area of the document. I'll go back up to the table of contents in this PDF document. Notice that the links are not styled as normal links. This will give a cleaner look if someone wants to print the PDF document. Later, I'll show you how you can give the links a more standard look if you prefer. I'll go back to the table of contents in the LibreOffice Writer document. I'll place the cursor in the table of contents title. The contents heading paragraph style is highlighted. I'll right click on this and select Modify. In the dialog that appears, I can make various changes to the attributes of this style. I'll go to the Alignment tab and change the setting to Center. I'll go to the Font tab and change the font size to 20 points. I'll click OK to close this dialog. Notice how the Table of Contents heading has changed. Unlike the Table of Contents itself, I can edit the title of the Table of Contents, giving it a new name. For example, I'll remove Table of and just leave Contents. But look what happens if I right-click on the table and select Update Index. The Contents heading goes back to its original name. Instead of trying to change the Contents heading directly, right-click on the Table of Contents and select Edit. I'll go to the Type tab. This is where you can permanently change the title. I'll change it to simply read Contents. You can also make other changes while in this dialog. I'll do so later. Right now I'll just click OK. You saw how I used the Contents Heading Paragraph Style to change the attributes of the Table of Contents title. I can also use paragraph styles to change the attributes of the various levels of the table of contents. I'll place the cursor in Chapter 1. Notice that Contents 1 paragraph style is highlighted in the sidebar. I'll right-click on this and select Modify. In the dialog that appears, I can make various changes to the attributes of the Contents 1 paragraph style. These changes will only change the attributes of this style, not the attributes of the Heading 1 paragraph style itself. To illustrate this, I'll go to the Fonts tab and set the size to 16 points. Next, I'll go to the Font Effects tab and change the font color to green. I'll click OK. Notice how the size and color of Chapter 1 in the Table of Contents has changed. I'll control click on this. Notice that Chapter 1 in the document itself has not changed. That is because it is a different paragraph style, hitting 1. I'll go back to the Table of Contents. I'll put the cursor in Chapter 1 again and right-click on the Contents 1 Paragraph Style in the sidebar. I'll right-click and select Modify. 
go to the Font Effects tab and set the color back to Automatic. I'll go to the Tabs tab. I'll change the fill character from dots to dashes. I'll click Apply. Nothing changed. Why? I'll explain shortly. Before closing the dialog, I'll change the fill character back to dots. I'll click OK. I'll right click on the table of contents and select Edit Index. In the dialog that appears, I'll click on the Entries tab. I make sure one is highlighted in the level area. Notice the structure area. I'll click on the T that stands for tab. Notice the dot in the fill character area. This takes precedence over the tab settings in the contents one paragraph style that I tried to change earlier. The pound sign stands for the page number. I'll click on this. I could change the character style to strong emphasis if I wanted to bold it. Or I could set up a custom character style to give it a different color. I'll just leave it set to none. The E stands for entry. In this case, the heading one paragraph style. The E pound sign stands for chapter number. Before a chapter number shows, I would need to make changes elsewhere to set one up. I won't do that in this video. The LS stands for link start. The LE stands for link end. These set the beginning and end of the hyperlink. This is why the whole line in the table of contents is a link. I'm going to change this. I'll click on the LE and hit delete. I put the cursor between the E and T and click hyperlink. Now only the entry will be a hyperlink. Notice the character style for the hyperlink is set to index link. That's why the link did not look like a regular hyperlink. I'm going to change this to internet link. I'll change the character style for LS to internet link as well. Look how the preview has changed. I'll click on all to set these settings for all levels of the table of contents. Again, the preview changes. Now I'll click on the T to change the tab setting. I'll change the fill character from a dot to nothing. This will only affect level 1. I'll click OK. Notice how the looks of the table of contents has changed. I'll make one more change. I'll put the cursor in chapter 1. I'll right click on the contents 1 paragraph style and select modify. In the font effects tab, I'll set underlining to single. I'll click OK. To get a better look, I'll go to print preview. I'll zoom in for a closer look. See how the chapters are set off from the sections and subsections within them. Notice that only the chapter, section, and subsection names are hyperlinks. I'll close Print Preview. I'll go to File, Export As, Export Directly as PDF. I'll save this. Then I'll open the PDF. Notice that the hyperlinks are more apparent now. I hope this video has shown you both how easy it is to insert a table of contents and how you can change that table of contents to your own design. There are even more things you can do to build a customized table of contents, but I'll end the tutorial here. If you learned something from this video, please give it a like. Then click the link in the description area below to go to my Writing Efficiently channel and check out my other videos.